Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, from this session onwards, I am planning to include histology uh, to my series uh, and we will be beginning with the topic epithelium which is the first topic in histology uh, when you enter into a medical college and I am sure you might have learned a lot about epithelium starting from your school day. So sometimes this will be just a quick review of the topic which you have already studied with some of the added points which is necessary uh, for your uh, medical college studies. Okay, so first uh, we will start with the definition of epithelium. So when you define epithelium, you need to know mainly these three points. That, that means in your definition, these three points should come uh, in your explanation. That is the first one is, what is epithelium? It is a continuous layer of cells. If you see some cells scattered all over there, you can't call it as epithelium. So the first point is, it is a continuous layer of cells. The next one is, there is little intercellular space. That means, again, when you arrange these cells continuously, there should not be any intercellular space between. That is the second point. And the third one is, it is usually covering some surfaces or it lines the cavities. So these are the two main uh, regions where you get the epithelium. It either covers or it lines the cavities. So these are the three important points which should be there when you define epithelium. So once again, it is a continuous layer of cells with little intercellular space and it is usually covering the surfaces or it lines the cavities. Now we will talk about the functions, why you need an epithelium or what are the main functions of the epithelium. The first one is it acts as a selective barrier. So depending upon the location where the different types of epithelia are seen, they will be acting as selective barriers because at some places it will allow air to diffuse, at some places it allow water to diffuse or sometimes it will be acting as a mechanical protection to uh, all the rest of the structures from entering into the cell likewise. So it acts as a selective barrier. The next one is it protects the underlying tissue. So this layer of epithelium actually protects the layers which are underlying it. So the epithelium acts as a protective layer. The third one is it synthesizes and secrete products. Some of the epithelial cells are modified so that they will, synth they will synthesize some products and they will be secreting it uh, onto the outer surface or into the cavities. So depending upon the uh, region in which it, they are seen, we will be uh, dealing with the topic in detail in the coming sessions. For the time being, you just understand some of the cells are modified to synthesize and secrete some of the products needed. Then the fourth one is they are again specialized and they act as sensory receptors. So they will be seen on the sensory surfaces. So that is the fourth, fourth function of the epithelium. Now there is an entity or a specialized uh, epithelia which you call it as mesothelium. Usually when we talk about epithelium we know that it can be derived from the ectoderm, it can be derived from the endoderm and it can be derived from the mesoderm. So these are the three main germinal layers in embryology from which you get different types of cells and tissues making up your body. Likewise epithelium can also be derived from all the three germ layers with other, which are the three germ layers from which the whole body is made up of. You have the ectoderm, you have the endoderm and you have the mesoderm. So all three layers will give rise to epithelia of different different regions. So when you, when will you call it as mesothelia? So mesothelia are nothing but epithelia derived from mesoderm that they which are of mesodermal origin you call that specifically as mesothelia and where will you get this type of mesothelia it is usually seen lining the cavities like the pericardial cavity the cavity surrounding the heart then the pleural cavity the cavity surrounding the lung and the peritoneal cavity the cavity uh, covering the abdominal organs so all these cavities will be lined by a special type of epithelia which are of mesodermal origin and you call it separately as mesothelia. Now, 
so till now we uh, discussed about its definition its functions and a special entity known as mesothelia now we will see some of the general features of epithelia the first one is it is polygonal in shape that means it can be of three or more sided okay usually it starts with four so it is polygonal in shape the next one is the basal surface is in contact with the basal lamina usually the basal lamina is secreted by the cells itself so that means if you have a basal lamina like this the base if you consider this as a cell the base of the cell will be in contact with the basal lamina then the third one is it can regenerate if it if some of the cells are lost it can be regenerated or it can be replaced so that is the another feature general feature of the epithelium then when you talk about the blood vessels you have the blood vessels in so here below the basement membrane you have the connective tissue supporting the epithelia okay so in this connective tissue you have the blood vessels but these blood vessels won't penetrate into the epithelial cells they won't penetrate so how the nutrition is reaching the epithelium it is just by diffusion so the the nutrition will just diffuse into the cells and the blood vessels won't penetrate into the cell so if you just cut one epithelial cell you won't be getting any blood vessels in it so that is very very important so that means nutrition is uh, actually by diffusion and not with the help of blood vessels directly entering into the cell so what what should be uh, the fate of the thickness of the epithelium it is actually limited because if you want say 5 5 or 6 cm thickness for the epithelium then it's not possible for the nutrition to reach up to the top isn't it if the thickness is more so there should be a limit in the thickness of the epithelium since the nutrition is made possible by diffusion and it is not uh, through the blood vessels directly entering into the epithelial cells so these are the main general features uh, and uh, all these points i have taken from gray's anatomy why because uh, the important topics which we begin with in histology like uh, the epithelium the connective tissue the muscular tissue etc are uh, they are the basic in anatomy and uh, i want all of you to just have a quick look of these basics from gray's anatomy which is considered as a bible that's the reason why i have also added points from gray's anatomy of course there are many beautiful books in histology but these basics i prefer all of you to uh, at least have uh, at least read once uh, the gray's anatomy okay now some of the general terms which we come across you have to keep in mind one is membrane when will you call a structure as a membrane epithelium along with the connective tissue together you call it as membrane so membrane is nothing but epithelium along with the connective tissue when will you call it as mucous membrane or mucosa again another term which we usually come across so if this membrane is having glands in it if if this membrane is having glands mucus glands in order to lubricate it that is known as mucus membrane or mucosa so membrane is simply epithelium along with its underlying connective tissue when will you call it as mucus membrane or mucosa if this membrane is having glands in it like mucus glands you call it as mucus membrane another entity is known as serous membrane or serosa when will you call it so serous membrane or serosa is nothing but mesothelium along with its connective tissue so mesothelium we have already mentioned they are the epithelial cells derived from mesoderm and they are usually seen in the cavities pericardial cavity pleural cavity and peritoneal cavity so where, where will you see the serosa or serous membrane you will be seeing serosa in these cavities and how will you call or what is the definition for serous membrane or serosa it is nothing but mesothelium along with its connective tissue so these um, three terminologies you should be thorough because these are the basics now now let's divide the epithelium broadly into two categories one is known as unilaminar and the other one is known as multilaminar so this unilaminar and multilaminar we classify it depending upon the number of layers 
uh, in the epithelia. Unilamina means this is just made up of a single layer of cells. You call it as unilaminar. So what, what do you mean by multilaminar? If you get more than one layer of cells, you call it as multilaminar. That is a broad classification depending upon the number of layers. Now again, this unilaminar is classified based on the shape of the cells. You, you get the first one as squamous cell or squamous epithelium. Then you have the cuboidal epithelium where the cells are cuboidal in shape. Then squamous means the flattened cells. Then columnar means the height of the cell is more than the breadth of the cell. Then pseudostratified. Pseudostratified means pseudo means false. Stratified means many layers. So the epithelium will look like many layered but ultimately it is a unilaminar or a single layered epithelium. Why? Because all the cells will be touching on the basement membrane. That is very very important. Why is it called pseudostratified? Uh, so when you have a, uh, have a look at the first, uh, when you just have a look at the epithelium, you will be seeing the nuclei at different levels like uh, that of a multilaminar but all the cells will be having a contact with the basement membrane though you get the nuclei at different levels all these cells will touch the basement membrane hence you call it as pseudostratified and it belongs to unilaminar and the final one is sensory epithelium which are specialized for sensory functions so these are uh, uh, the class subclassification of unilaminar epithelium and the details we will be seeing in next session so keep watching, please do subscribe and please let me know your feedback. Thank you.